Now that I think about it, I don't know if I've ever seen this in my life or the history of the transfer portal where a head coach has taken five players from one team in 17 days. Kind of feel like Deion Sanders wants to go after these Florida State players to show the program, hey, you should have hired me as a head coach. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot, and let me repeat this, you cannot make this stuff up. What is up with Deion Sanders' fascination of stealing Florida State's players? In the last 17 days, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five players from Florida State have went to Colorado. We're going to talk all about that in tonight's video, and I also almost forgot to mention this. They picked up a new wide receiver as well. I don't want to overhype the situation, but at the same time, I'm trying to warn you guys, Colorado, they're building something. This will be, mark it down, this will be one of the quickest rebuilds you ever see. And I've made this clear to you guys, I don't expect to see too much progress in the win-loss column. But, that doesn't mean they're not progressing and heading in the right direction. At this point in time, what is so impressive to me at least, is how fast Deion Sanders has replaced the 57 players that left. Remember, 57 players transferred, entered the portal from Colorado, and they've already replaced them all. It kind of feels like Colorado is an AAU basketball team. When it's all said and done, this Colorado football team is going to have a player from dang near every single college. We're going to talk all about that in tonight's video. I'm going to make this short and sweet. Do want to get this news out there. As always, if you're new to the channel, you like Colorado content, college football content, consider subscribing, joining our community. We would love to have you here. All right, Matt, Baba Basha to crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. You know what? I'm going to start on the video by saying this. I blame you guys. Yes, that's right. I blame y'all because nobody sent me this. I had to find it out myself, which is rare. And I'm not complaining. It's just I'm surprised because normally you guys are sending me stuff nonstop on Colorado. Maybe some of y'all don't see this as a big pickup. Maybe it just went under the radar because of everything else going on. But Colorado landed a new wide receiver from Northwestern State who goes by the name of Javon Antonio. I said Javon. Would it be Javon? Javon? I think it's Javon. Javon Antonio. We're going to go with that. If I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. I find this pickup interesting for two reasons. Number one, like I said, nobody's talking about it. But number two, Colorado's wide receiver room is loaded. To be honest, I think Montana Lamonius Craig, the wide receiver who had 154 receiving yards in the spring game who entered the portal, is better than this guy. And I don't think it's necessarily that close. And I don't mean that to be disrespectful to Javon Antonio. It's more so of, I just think Montana Lamonius Craig is that good. My point is, why did Montana leave? We already talked about this. Because he wasn't going to get playing time. He wasn't going to play much. Yeah, he would have played here and there, but there were some question marks on whether he'd actually start. And of course, he wanted to start. So he figured, hey, why not? Let me enter the portal. Let me go somewhere else where I know I can play. So that's why I find this pickup rather intriguing because this kid coming in, he's already at a disadvantage. At this point in time, I'm asking you guys, does anybody actually believe that Mr. Javon Antonio here is going to start? Because I don't. The wide receiver room at Colorado is arguably the strongest position group. I am very curious, so let me know your thoughts on that. Also, you may be curious, at Northwestern State in 2022, he had 64 catches for 684 yards with six touchdowns. Not bad. But at the same time, nothing too impressive. Nothing to get you really excited. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've never heard of Javon Antonio up until he committed to Colorado, so I did some research. I watched some of his film and I like what I saw. What I took away from my film study is he's not your typical wide receiver. He's roughly six foot five, 225 pounds. Yes, that is right. You heard me correctly. Six foot five, 225. When I think of a wide receiver at the college level, you know, I'm thinking something around six foot, six foot one, but this guy's huge. And that's obviously the best part about his game. That's the upside. He's got some Mike Evans to him. He's a big wide receiver that can go up there and Randy Moss some people every now and then. He is your ideal and stereotypical third and 20, just throw it up and let my guy go get it type of guy. Very similar to your boy Matt when I was in seventh grade PE class. Y'all know they call me the White Randy. We got a similar play style. Not the fastest guys on the field, but you throw it up, we're gonna go get it. I'm wishing him the best of luck. Not too sure how much production you're gonna see out of him. Not too sure how much he's gonna play, but at the same time, you kind of gotta feel like, hey, I mean, if he's going to Colorado, him and Deion Sanders, they had to be on the same terms that he was going to have a chance to start or play. That's something to keep your eyes on. But moving on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video, 
we gotta talk about Deion Sanders stealing all these Florida State players. What's going on? Look, I get it, Deion. I know you played there. You may like the team, but dang, you're getting all of them. Now that I think about it, I don't know if I've ever seen this in my life or the history of the transfer portal where a head coach has taken five players from one team in 17 days. If we have any nerds in the comment section that know some transfer portal history, let me know if that's a record. It's gotta be. I've got a lot to say about this, but before I get amped up, before I get going, let me show you the five guys. Cornerback, Omarion Cooper. Edge rusher, Derek McLendon. Defense lineman, Bishop Thomas. Linebacker, Brendan Gant. Or my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan Gant and safety, Travis J. I thought it said Brendan Grant, but it is Brendan Gant. If you've been watching the Colorado videos, you already know we've talked about Omarion Cooper, Bishop Thomas, Brendan Gant, and Travis J. The one guy we haven't talked too much about is Derek McLendon. Linden. He's one of the newer guys. I'm not going to sit up here and break down every single guy. Here's all you need to know, long story short. All these guys you're looking at right here were three or four star recruits coming out of high school. These guys are good ball players, but unfortunately, and I know Florida State fans are about to run to the comment section and say this, I've already beat you to it. They didn't get to play a lot at Florida State, and more than likely, they were not going to play. They were having a hard time trying to get onto the field, and that's normal at a big-time Power 5 school. It's not like these guys were playing and they got benched or they were bad. They didn't even get an opportunity really in the first place. And the one guy that played a lot, Brandon Gant, he started a bunch of games. The thing with Brandon Gant was he just didn't have that big of a role at Florida State. He wanted a bigger role, so he went elsewhere. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now I'm kind of second-guessing myself. I can't remember. Brandon Gant... He did start some games, didn't he? If I'm wrong on that, I do apologize. But even if he didn't start, I know he played in like 33 total games at Florida State. He's kind of like your seasoned veteran linebacker that's going to go in, and I believe he's going to start at Colorado. But overall, you get the point. Vast majority of these guys didn't get a great opportunity at Florida State. So what happens? Coach Prime, he picks up the phone and goes, hey, Y'all guys want to come here and get a better shot, and the rest is history. Your casual fans are going to chop this up as, oh, look at Dion. He's just getting some backups from Florida State. whoop de doo Who cares? They weren't even playing. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up. I'd argue and say getting these five young men right here is better than getting a three or four star recruit in high school. Because at least with these guys, they've been in the college system. They've been in the weight room. They're ready to go. All you got to do is get them into Colorado, develop them a little bit more, show them the schemes, and boom. Ready to go, like I said. With a young guy coming out of high school, it just takes a little bit more time. Most times they're underweight, they're not ready for the college lifestyle, and etc., etc. We've seen it every year. You're going to see more players out of the transfer portal have a bigger impact than a true freshman. You can argue with a brick wall. It is very rare. It is so rare to see a true freshman at any position start or even have an impact whatsoever. But transfer portal guys, psh, we see it every year at every position. Check out this comment. I really like it. For all you guys saying, quote unquote, they are backups. Joe Burrow was a backup too at one point and he transferred, but I digress. Yep, that's my point exactly. These guys, they can play. They just need a shot. Ooh, another good comment. Any player can be cultivated into a beast. I love how everyone speaks on them not getting playing time or being backups. That's life. Some of the people you count out become the most successful. I love a good underdog story. Be coachable and you can win any game. Look, man, y'all can clown these kids. Y'all can clown Colorado for getting second and third stringers all you want. But I wouldn't be shocked if these guys become starters and have a great season. But whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. You know what I want to speak on? You know what I notice? Check this out. All five of these guys you're looking at right here, they're defensive players. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Remember, what does your boy Matt said about this Colorado team? Yeah, I think the offense is going to be A-OK. -okay. It's a defense I'm worried about. It's a lack of depth I'm worried about. This right here, even if these guys don't start, it gives you more depth. This is another underrated part about Coach Prime that people don't pay attention to. He doesn't go after just flashy wide receivers, flashy cornerbacks, flashy running backs and quarterbacks. He goes after guys that don't get a lot of recognition. He goes after guys in the trenches. He knows to win, he's got to have a good defense and a good front seven and just guys in the trenches that are ready to play. These are not flashy pickups. These are not guys that people are going to talk about on an everyday basis, but they could make all the difference in the world come week two, week three, week four. You never know. I also don't think it's too ironic or coincidental that he's getting all these Florida State players. I can guarantee you this, these kids right here, they look up to Deion Sanders. They respect him a ton. But at the same time, I kind of feel like Deion Sanders wants to go after these Florida State players to show the program, hey, you should have hired me as a head coach. Now I think he's looking at this like, okay, I'm going to take your backups and shove them in your face and show you these guys should have been playing and I can do more with less. I know how Deion Sanders is. He's that type of guy. He would be that petty to do it. 
There's many more things I could say. We'll leave it at this for now. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh, roll